Hello everybody, my name is Parker Miller and I'm a computer science student at Central Washington University. And this summer I was focused on pruning in modern apple orchards and my research was on the variability among human pruners. Now as a background, pruning is just cutting off that older overgrown pieces of branch to make way for new growth during the next harvest or next growing season. And it is required every year and is the second greatest expense next to harvesting but is arguably more difficult than harvesting as harvesting you could just walk out into the orchard and just you know grab the apples or the cherries whatever off there might be some technique in being fast and good at it but pruning requires more knowledge of where you need to prune and how to look at the branch and decide what points should you prune and this difficulty and expense leads to an interest in robotic pruning and for robotic pruning you have to create these rules that will help tell the robot where it needs to cut on that branch. And one of the benefits of robotic pruning is that you improve uniformity among the pruning process. And, but to establish, to get uniformity, you have to first look at what is the amount of variability right now that we're using. And so my objective was to quantify the variability among pruners in a commercial apple orchard. And we went about this by first creating 3D models of those branches. As you can see here, we have two uh, tree trunks with their branches that kind of meet in the middle, like what is in an orchard. And then we had to document the pruner's decisions. And we had 23 branches and we got the pruners to uh, walk up to the branch and we'd video them as they would point on the branch where they want it or where they would cut if they were actually pruning the branch and with this video you can see he's kind of like pretending to cut with his fingers where he would do if he was actually doing this uh, during the pruning season and so after that then I would look at those videos and take the points that he selected and bring those into a 3d model and then using uh, algorithm in MATLAB, I would group the points that were close together. And we went by points that were within one centimeter of each other. That would cluster those points, and so we'd have a cluster of points that, that was on the 3D model that showed where it was selected, and we could figure out how many times that point was selected. And we also got a bunch of other coordinate data that we were able to analyze. Now, a main challenge that we had to deal with was poor 3D models. Not all of them were bad. It was only about one, uh, two to three models were bad, and some of those we had to actually skip because they were so bad that we couldn't get any valuable data off of. This is one right here, as you can see, with these massive gaps in the branches, and some of the branches are almost non-existent, and that made it really hard with step three. Of, I can't bring those pruner decision points into the model if there's nothing on the model for me to select. And so uh, here are some of our results. So we have the, on the bottom, we have the branches that I went over and we have the number of cuts and those are per pruner. And so in blue, we have the mean and that light green, we have the min and in the orange, we have the max number of cuts per pruner. And you can see there's a pretty good degree of variability among these. Um, number seven here is pretty consistent with six for a min, eight for a max, and seven for the mean. That's the most consistent branch we have when it comes to these number of cuts per prayer. And that's really good, but the rest aren't, most of the rest aren't anywhere near that level of consistency. Like number 14 here, we have the worst one, which is one for the min, 15 for the max, and six for the mean. Those are very large differences between those numbers, and that is very inconsistent and not what you are looking for when it comes to uniformity. Another factor we looked at was the number of unique cuts on those same branches and we qualified a unique cut as a cut that was only selected once so only one pruner decided that that point needed to be uh, cut off and we are comparing these to the total number of cuts rather than the cuts per pruner this time and you can see anywhere from a quarter to a third of these were unique cuts even on number 21 here, half of those were unique. And that's very inconsistent and very not uniform that there are this many points that only one pruner decided should be cut and the rest said, no, that doesn't need to be cut. It's fine the way it is. Uh, here's more of a visualization tool that we used. It is a heat map of one of the branches with those two tree trunks again and that branches that kind of connect in the middle. And those red dots are those pruning locations that we found and they are based by size 
So the smaller ones like this one, that's kind of hard to see in those ones. Those ones are ones points that were selected very few or only one time. And you have this big one that was selected lots of times and these more medium sized ones that were selected, you know, kind of a lot, but not a whole load. And you can see there's a lot of different points on there. Some are hard to see, but there's a lot of points on there. And that's very variable. So this shows that there is a high degree of variability among printers, which is kind of what the consensus was among just first thoughts, what most people would immediately think when asked this question. And then obviously there's a high degree of variability among the branches themselves. Just by looking at them, you can see they're very different. And this just compounds on top of the pruners, it makes just the entire process very inconsistent, very non-uniform. And so if we wanted to further this research, we would have to look at analyzing those limbs and pruners more and looking at why they made those decisions to possibly make rules that could then be used for robots. And also you'd have to look at what difference does it make? Does this variability actually affect the outcome in terms of yield during the next harvest? Or does this variability not mean anything? And even though they're all making different decisions, they're still all getting the job done to the same kind of degree. And, uh, I would like to thank uh, my advisor, Dr. Matthew Whiting, Manoj and Martin for the technical and coding help, especially Martin who helped with coding and also took the 3D models with his research project. I would also like to thank Juan, Freddy, Uzi, and Bernadita, who during the pruning season were actually out in the orchards taking those videos for me that I was able to then look at. And thank you guys for watching.